Well, we'll look at the final four, but we'll look at the Elite Eight and how those guys did. And that first game that I'm looking at, Florida Dayton, uh, that's just 10 points in that game. But do you feel it was a big 10 points or a comfortable 10 points, or was it tight? John, you first. Yeah, but you know, my in my opinion, uh, you know, that's a that's a huge victory for for a Dayton program. You're talking about a program that's that's uh, mid major by by nature, uh, smaller market, uh, no name, first time in the in the getting there, and have, having to play the overall number one seed in the entire tournament. So uh, you know, I I, I got to believe if if we spoke to Billy Donovan that he was he was definitely nervous because at any given moment, you know. Um, Dayton was on a run and, and, and on one of the most memorable, you know, was on a great run in the tournament. So anything could have happened. I, I think it was a great, great moral victory for them Yeah. in, in that sense. Yeah, definitely. BJ. Yeah, I second that. I think yeah, Dayton was, uh, Dayton had a very, very good year. They were probably a little bit lucky to get by Ohio State. They had a tough road just getting to the Florida game. And um, they, you know, Florida has just been real consistent all year doing what they do and, um, you know, and guarding and, and playing their system and, and you know, playing a lot of guys. And um, so, but Dayton had a great run out of the A-10, no question. Definitely. Do you think that uh, Dayton will be able to bounce back next year, BJ? Well, now, yeah, expectation, and yeah, for sure, expectations are on Dayton right now. I'm sure, you know, Archie Miller has, has set the tone for a first-year program that this is, uh, this is what, what is expected from here on out. It's the same with those players that are, that are there on that roster. They believe now that they can get there. Not only get there, they can win a couple games in advance. Yeah, well, they also, you know, making it making it uh, to that point helps a lot in recruiting, coach, as you know. So, uh, and I think they they signed Archie, right? They gave him an extension already, so he's going to be there. And so, expectations are definitely higher. Do you yeah, no, no doubt. Do you think that um, Florida, BJ? You mentioned Florida before. Um, are playing have been playing close games all season, and this seems like another close game. Do you think they're going to keep riding that out? Yeah, Anthony, we talk all the time about coaching and the parity in college. Coaching is such a key factor, and you look at um, the Final Four. I mean, you know, Bo Ryan probably doesn't get enough credit for the coaching job that he does. And we talked last week about him and, and Beeline really being, uh, you know, innovators in terms of what they do in, in, in stretching the floor and bringing their bigs to the perimeter and, and you know, opening up space for their guards to, to either work in the post or to, to penetrate the lane. Uh, he obviously is a great coach also. And, and, I, and you know, rounding it out, um, so Kevin Ali obviously has done a great job. He's a younger coach, but the fact that he, he's gotten these guys there. And Calipari, who we talked about last week, I thought he outcoached Pacino. I really did. I mean, I thought – there was a couple of key moves um, that he made um, in particular. I know he, he – I don't know if it was on a switch or it was done on purpose, but he, he had one of the smaller guys on Harrell when Harrell picked up a sports foul on, a, on an offensive foul in the paint. Um, he rested uh, the kid Randall until late. He rested him until about the 530 mark, and he was fresh down the stretch and made a bunch of different plays. So, um, so to round back to your question, I think Billy is – is you know is ready for the challenge yeah. even if they are close games and but I think I do agree it's going to be close because the rest of the coaches that are in the final four are equally up to the challenge right right coach- uh, in my opinion though everybody is they are fantastic all four of those coaches uh preparation is going to be a, a, a utmost decision and utmost key and so you give them all time to get developed and and uh and have scouting reports and, and break down video. You know, it's going to be about who's been there, who has been around, who has been in that in that in that dance and in that high pressure situation. Obviously, you know, Kentucky has to live in that in that bubble all the time. And uh, but you're looking at a, at a Florida team, and the same with like a Wisconsin. They run their system. They are who they are uh, from the tip off to to the very end, and that's credit to their to their coaching staff. Uh, experience is going to count, I believe, in this in this in this uh, in this Final Four. Uh, so I got to kind of give a little bit of an edge to Florida in that regard because I think they've, they've already have been there. Coach, do you think there's any pressure on one team more than another to perform? Repeat that again, Anthony. Would you say that there's uh, pressure on one team more than any other to perform, or you feel that right now they're all in the same boat? No matter how you look at it, Kentucky will always experience the most pressure. Uh, 
of, of those four teams that are that are there, Kentucky bears the burden. They they travel with the blue mist. Uh, that's what they call their Kentucky fan base, and the expectations are outrageous. And uh, you know, so they they clearly, even though they are there as freshmen, they have an expectation level because of who they are. Um, and so, you know, Wisconsin and probably of all the teams, you know, this is their first time there. And uh, so I think they have the least expectation that on the, on the four that are, that are, that are there. Yeah. Florida, based upon the tournament bracket seating is the overall number one seed. So, and that's, that's, you know, they've got the burden of, of this year's tournament, yeah. but Kentucky will always bear the burden overall. Last time um, Florida won, they had a, a good few seniors oh. there with them. Uh, guys that opted to stay on the team to go uh, was to go back to back. Am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, uh, Joe Kim Noah, you know, is, is a prime example of that. Uh, Ford Brewer uh, is just fantastic young man. You know, I got to see them when they came into Los Angeles, and uh, and they were fantastic. You know, they were they were workaholics. They, they they enjoyed and they were really respectful to anybody that they saw. Yeah. And that's a credit to Billy Donovan and 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 him building the Gator program <laughs> and learning from others. No, so he was under Patino at one point. He's a player himself. And he just has a class program. In him. And so when you get guys who experience what college life is about and continue to enjoy that collegiate experience and return again, yeah. that experience is tremendous. It's, it's, it's easier for Billy Donovan because he has guys that already know what he's talking about. Much, much more difficult for Calipari because he does have the freshmen and uh, has a new system and a new, new, new kids all the time that he has to uh, blend into the into what he wants to build there. Yeah. Yeah. BJ, would you say that there's one team that's, uh, you talked about last time, the team that has, uh, is that NBA ready, has NBA ready players. Would you say one has more than yeah. the other? Yeah, definitely Kentucky. I really like Kentucky. And you're talking to a, uh, you're talking to a graduate of the University of Wisconsin. So I'm a Badger <laughs> at heart. But um, but to be honest, I think you know Kentucky is hot. They're super hot. I really like what Calipari's done on the bench. I think Julius Randall. I think watching Julius Randall versus Montrez Harrell. I think those two guys from Louisville and Kentucky. You could throw them into the NBA tomorrow. And I really. I mean, I can see it already. Randall is so scary talented. Um, he's such a big boy for a young kid, and he finishes around the hoop. He's He's expanded his game. He can make a play for somebody else now. Um, he knocks down his free throws. So I think he's the best player left in the, in the tournament. Um, and, I, and I really, really like the two Harrison kids, the guards. Um, you know, the one kid, the point guard, is just so smooth. And he's made a lot of plays this year. And then all of a sudden, the other kid stepped up and made three huge threes against Michigan. So you know his confidence is going to be there. Yeah. And then they have other pieces in the middle, like this kid, you know, Jakari Johnson is a Brooklyn kid, and he stepped up. And Poitras made plays, and I don't think they're going to have the kid um, Paulie Stein, but I think they're good enough without him. So, um, but yeah, I, I always talk about the team with the most NBA talent, and, and, and there are exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, those guys typically end up there at the end of the day. And um, I think if Kentucky makes their free throws, they're going to have to make a couple of big free throws, yeah. but I, I think at the end of Monday night, we're going to see, uh, we're going to see Kentucky. Now look, it could they could lose Saturday, but um, <laughs> yeah. but but as far as the NBA talent and how that translates, that's the team that I would pick. Okay, coach. Well, you know it's hard to argue. You know those guys are super talented athletes, no question about it, and they figured out a way to win. And uh, they need a lot of lucky breaks along the tournament to get to get to the get to the big dance. You know, so you know, Coach Ryan. Uh, with, with what Wisconsin did an unbelievable job having to come out here into Los Angeles across the country for him and take on Arizona. Yep. That was a huge deal. Yep. So confidence booster in terms of that. Now they're back into a, you know, another long distance trip, you know, it's still Dallas is still kind of far, yep. but the, the hoopla and the dance and the stuff that surrounds the final four, you know, up uh, today arrivals and uh, practice sessions and, uh, and boy, as it gets, the distractions are tremendous. You know, and so some coaches know how to handle that better, yeah. and Calipari is one of them. He knows how to handle that pretty good, yeah. and so he's got an experience behind him in that in that sense. But the same with Billy Donovan; he's been there already. He knows how to handle the distraction. And if they do meet again, you know, Florida and Kentucky, that's a that's pretty good, you know, Southeast Conference matchup. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's a toss-up at that point, you know, because it'll be about 
It is about making free throws. It is about who's going to win the rebounding war and who's going to limit turnovers. One other thing I would add, Anthony, is that, you know, we, we, we haven't talked a lot about UConn yet, and I do, I do think Julius Randle is the best player and NBA prospect left. But you know what? The Baz Napier is the best guard left in the, in the tournament, in my opinion. Right. And a lot of times, you know, it's a guard-oriented situation, and so we shouldn't forget about those guys either. I don't think, I don't think they have the talent that Kentucky has, although, you know, they, they beat Florida. Um, and I think Napier beat him earlier in the season on a last-second buzzer beater, if I remember correctly. Okay. So, you know, we we, we got to keep that in mind. But um, but we got we to gotta also think about that kid Napier because, you know what, he could come in there himself and basically win two games. Right. No doubt. No doubt about it. That kid can absolutely shoot the basketball incredibly well. No question. So are we looking at two really close games? Uh, in my opinion, yeah, sure. I think they're going to be no no more of a stretch to five to seven points. Um you know, you're taking into consideration some quality coaching, too. So, you know, 6-0 runs are going to definitely be, be the norm for a cause for a timeout. You're not going to have guys that are going to want to go to the locker room on a Saturday night and haven't had uh, all their timeouts left, and uh, they're not going to feel good about that. So they want to utilize that, plus, you know, all your TV timeouts. So every four minutes, something's going to go on anyway. Yeah. A lot of strategy on that bench is going to occur to keep the games close. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I think UConn, Florida – UConn plays because they both play close games. That's what they do. Well, that'll definitely be decided late. I think the possibility for a blowout comes with Kentucky, and I and I'm not you know I don't love saying that, but I think if they if they go at Kaminsky early and take advantage of the fact that he might have some trouble guarding the bigs from Kentucky, if they could get him into foul trouble, that really limits what Wisconsin can do on the offensive side of the floor. And I don't know in general. If Wisconsin has the athletes, uh, I would give Bo Ryan the edge in an X and O situation, but I don't know if they have the athletes to hang with Kentucky. So I think if Cal attacks Kaminsky early in the post and they don't settle, I think that's something that really could open up that game. Um, you know, having said that, it, it, that also could be a close game, but I think that that's the one possibility where that, that could be a 15- or 20-point game if Kentucky plays it the right way and they execute. Okay. Yeah, without without a doubt, I concur on that. I I believe they're going to attack Kaminsky definitely and going to go after him hard and heavy. And the athleticism of Randall is is uh, yeah, that's a, that's an animal. And the Harrison twins are very very big. So there's going to be some some you know even if they went in there, it's not that's that's a that's a three point play waiting to happen, you know. And the young kids found a way to win. That's that's a uh, priceless man. Find a way to win games. Yeah, the team that plays on the fifth. Do you think it's going to be to their, their advantage? They, you know, the winner of that game, they get that extra day. Or do you do you feel that it doesn't matter the team that's just played the night before? They're still on a high, so they're ready to play. Well, to get the back to backs, you know, that's again you're taking into consideration a lot of distractions. You know, from when I coach professional basketball, I mean, this back to back nights, the preparation to get a guy off the high and back down and into the green room and talking uh, to the press and. Uh, that the coming down and then having to switch gears and get back into the next opponent. Yeah. Not an easy deal. Not an easy deal. So some of the strategy is going to be about uh, an overload. You know, when I was at Oregon State, sometimes we overloaded our athletes, and that's just it's overkill. Yeah. In the Final Four, you know, this this is another situation where you can have coaches overload those those players into, into <laughs> seeing video and video and video, and maybe some of them are going to do double sessions, and uh, you never know. You never know where the, that attention span is going to be. For that athlete, it's going to come down to me making making plays. You know, we all pretty much, they're all going to know each other pretty well by now. BJ? Yeah, I mean, look, at this point, I, I, I agree with Coach. I think that, uh, you know, being in the Final Four, it'll, the adrenaline will be going. And, you know, I, I usually the best usually the best team ends up on top Monday night. So, um, but the truth is, you know, we're breaking down these games and we're talking about all these you know, variables and, and yeah. outside factors. And uh, and the truth is, really, any if the ball bounces a certain way, any of these four teams can end up winning Monday night. I mean, that's and that's going to make for a great weekend. I mean, I know personally, I'm, I've enjoyed and I've heard from a lot of people um, in the business and just casual sports fans that they have enjoyed this tournament so much. Um, there's been so many great games, starting with that, you know, Dayton-Ohio State game. I think it was the first game of the tournament, and Aaron Kraft throws up a shot that, you know, hits the glass and hits the rim and falls off. And that was like the first couple hours of the tournament. Yeah. And, you know, straight on through with Kentucky and, um, and Wichita State 
and then Kentucky and, and Louisville and Kentucky and Michigan. I mean, there's been some amazing games. So, um, so you know, at the end of the day, I'm really looking forward to this weekend. And I, I just think whoever plays the best and, and executes what they're trying to do is going to come out on top. Yeah, I just love watching, uh, you know, the drama that, that unfolded all the way throughout this tournament, the matchups. And, but, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in, in how they look uh, that day. Yeah. You know, are, are, are they loose? That's a key term. Are they, are they excited to be there? Some teams have so much pressure on them that they carry a, a burden. And, uh, you know, you see players smile. I love seeing them, their passion. Yeah. And uh, if you watch them and they're excitable and, and they're happy and they're loose and they're bouncing all over the place as they walk from hotel back and forth to places, boy, that, that's a team I give the edge to, you know, because they're quick. They're going to execute better. They, they've, they've kept it simple. And, uh, and then their athletes are having fun and passionate and not having all that intense pressure on them. Should be oh, should be wonderful. Are you the same way? I, I'm not embarrassed to admit it. I love that that one shining moment piece at the end because that always encapsulates all of the different emotions that you're talking about. And it's really great when you've invested, you know, a month to watch the tournament and just go back and look at, uh, you know, all the highlights and and these kids pouring their heart out into getting this thing done. Um, I know it's only like a two or three minute little montage, but man, that always gets me watching that piece at the end. Oh yeah, no question. It was one of the highlights of the whole tournament. You know, you get to go back and and, and experience that memory again, and it's, it's uh, remarkable. Yeah, and I tell you what, it's going to be fun to even look at something like uh, when they announce the brackets again, and all those uh, predictions that people made, who got there, who didn't get there. Uh, and, and those people who called out a few teams and said, well, you know, this one, look out for this team. And, yeah, everyone's like, ah, no, they'll just get to maybe the Sweet 16, but here they are in the Final Four. Oh, no doubt. You know, there's uh, 64 teams, really 68, and you went through the whole bracket. You know, you are you had to see some close games. You had some nail biters. You had some uh, strategy. Each team just didn't run through through their their win win column to get here. It, it has been very difficult. It is a difficult road, but um, they're in Texas now. You know they're going to have some fun. They're going to be in awe of the building. They're going to be in awe of uh, all their fan bases coming out and watching them, and uh, and uh, the the security that goes along for just traveling to go eat. You know it, it is it is quite the spectacle. And then and then uh, and after Saturday, you know, boy, it it, it empties out. You know. Uh, almost every coach kind of leaves, goes back. They're going to hit road recruiting again on that on that Monday, and boy, everybody's kind of back. And now you've got the whole the whole world now paying attention to that Monday night game. Yeah, great stuff. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you for your time. It's been able to been great to talk about this, and I'm looking forward to catching up again uh, after the final game is played.